uh, let me tell you, uh, it's very exciting. It's a, it's, it's, it's a fun concept, and yes, we are. It's a sprint race, so it's not going to be an oval. Uh, spectators will be either positioned in bleachers or from the boardwalk. Uh, there's potential for power, mutual wagering. Uh, competition between the casinos is one of the concepts. It's likely going to be a one-day event. Uh, those details are presently being, being looked at and reviewed. The legislature spoke and uh, said that we think this is something that uh, would be of value to both the uh, Atlantic City excitement and our horse racing industry. Where did the idea come from? It, it, it came out of Atlantic City and looking for novel ways to promote the resort to take time that otherwise isn't isn't real busy. This would happen in October. This builds off of a cycle coming out of Miss America into October, likely a Columbus Day weekend approach. Uh, and of course, it's driven by a 700-year-old event that takes place in Italy. Uh, although it won't mimic it entirely, that that event's a little bit rough. This is going to be a real sport because it's, it's being described to me. It's going to be a sprint race. But you know, legislature's involvement comes because paramutual wagering uh, may be offered. Uh, talk to me about Atlantic City in general. We were speaking with the uh, new CEO over at uh, what's now called the Revel uh, Casino Hotel. Uh, he, he's very uh, upfront optimistic, but also upfront uh, realistic about some of the challenges facing him over there. Uh, what, what do you see in terms of where the, the moves that Revel has made and the moves that Atlantic City as a whole has been making? I think it's all in the right direction. I mean, uh, we all understand what happened around us with competition and those things you can't control. All you can control is what is within your reach. And uh, the reinvention of Atlantic City, Atlantic City uh, has not had to reinvent itself just one time. It's happened many times over, over the years. And this is another, uh, another transition period. But all the indicators for the amenities other than gaming are very strong. And uh, the report card of people who visit the city is also very encouraging. People enjoy themselves and have an interest in coming back. So uh, the gaming numbers are always important. Internet gaming is coming, which is going to, uh, going to be another dimension. But uh, the amenities, the shopping, the restaurants, they're the things that, uh, that are going to provide the growth potential for the region and for Atlantic City and for the state and very important numbers uh, to our Treasury. Just uh, flip the calendar page. New fiscal year has begun. State has a new budget. Got it in advance. No, no drama getting it this time around. But it seems like every, everybody I speak with on both sides of the aisle uh, seems satisfied that it got, it got through the way it got through, but not necessarily celebrating the end result. How do you feel about the, the new state budget? Well, I've been on the budget committee, I think now, I want to say a uh, solid eight years, maybe even 10 years. I, I was on appropriations prior, but uh, this, you know, I'm pragmatic about how we approach these things. The Constitution requires we have a balanced budget, and uh, we have a balanced budget starting. But as I remind everyone, a budget is an, a document of estimates. You don't get all the revenue on the first day of the new year. You don't spend all the money on the first day that the budget is enacted. Uh, it's a living, breathing document that it's, that, that's going to be changed and moved around over, over 12 months. We all will would have liked to have done different things with the numbers and revenues we had, but there are only so many priorities. Uh, I think some priorities that could have been addressed were not addressed, but it's a give and take. It's a negotiation, and, uh, and you know, we just work to, to, to move to the next day. In terms of revenue raising, the administration has been, uh, uh, I guess, crowing to some extent over the fact they've had six months in a row now of uh, revenue exceeding their uh, revised projections. What do you think about the revenue uh, that's being collected, the, the rate at which it's being collected, and what that says about the economy in this state right now? Well, first, you, you use a very important word. Uh, they're exceeding, the revenue is exceeding projections that had to be revised because the original projections were not able to be met, and it was clear they were not going to be met. And that gave us some fits as, as the year closed out. Uh, we're encouraged collectively that there is growth. We'd like the growth to be bigger. We think, in general, New Jersey's economy has lagged a bit behind uh, some of our sister states in the region. Uh, but we're making great effort in, in policy decisions on the legislative side to try and make New Jersey an even better place to do business because business drives jobs. So, again, we have to be very realistic about what we're dealing with. Uh, there's not an unlimited flow of resources coming to the state, and there's going to be more and more demands on this budget as we continue to make uh, fuller payments into the pension plan and, and meet obligations uh, that, that, that have to be, that are really core obligations, and they're going, to, they're going to eat up bigger parts of the budget as these next couple of years unfold. So there, there is, there's concern, and there should be concern. We have to be responsible in the approach to how we deal with this money. Assemblyman, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on the program, sir. Likewise.